everyone. Good morning. How are we all? Sorry, just at a tricky bump in an edit that I'm doing at the moment. Um, just had to get that sorted. Uh, how are we all? How is everyone? Hit us with good news, says Sally Griffin. Well, I mean, it, it, for many it'll be good news that we can go on holiday to Spain very soon. Um, this, whoop, to me... For others of us, that will be a, a note of extraordinary caution. Um, but uh, I think things are, you know, bar certain parts of the world, which we know about, obviously, India, I think you can just slowly feel a flexing of coming back to normal. So Sally Griffin, I think that might be good news for some. Hi, Mel W, Anita O'Reilly, Bethan Williams. Hi, Tim. I hope you're well, Squire. Brenda McGee, I saw was up there earlier. There's Brenda McGee. Uh, it's like a horse race. Claire Yardley, chasing Claire Yardley, coming up on the inside, Karen J. Williams, Hester, Heather Westgarth, Brenda McGee, and on Ophelia is Claire Yardley, Helen Groves, Karen J. Williams, Brenda McGee, De Denise Nelson Gale. Sending you a big hug, Denise. Uh, Claire Ross Reed, Jan Mel W, Anita O'Reilly, Bethan Williams, hello Bethan, uh, Tim Reed, hi all I've missed. You haven't missed anything, I promise you. Um, wow, and it's just broken. A government scientific advisor, this is good news for you, has suggested we may all be able to hug again from June. How's about that? Who thought, who thought, sorry, I wonder what that was. Who thought we'd ever be in a set, a set of circumstances where we'd say that sentence, we'll be allowed to hug again? Eh? Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Um, I'm going to ask you, if you could hug someone, or when you can hug someone, who's the first person you're going to hug? Fiona Reid, loads of people. Happy Vivian Tinsley. Happy birthday, Vivian. I won't... Gar it's singing in a ghastly manner. Uh, hi from Sunny Malta. Tara Fitzgerald, Ireland's, uh, my mum, I'll, I'll go to what people are saying. Ireland's vaccine authority said that people under 50 who've had COVID and aren't immunocompromised only need one dose as that will give them about the same protection. Once we get, on, once you get the vaccine out there, it looks like the vaccine is really doing the job, doesn't it? Anyway, lo lots of people saying, Mum, my nan, Penny Shrimpton, Helen Groves, my friend, Penny Spearing, my two sons, someone somewhere, my nieces, um, Harriet Eve, my grandparents, Katie Merrick's grandparents. I was looking back over Instagram a while back and uh, I found the image of where we could give Nanny Di a hug. There was that moment, wasn't there, where we were just too scared to hug before the bubble came in. Oh, and she cried and we cried. B. Stiber, my cousin Teddy, uh, Vicky Edwards, I'm going running from someone wanting a hug, I like my space. Fair enough, Vicky, and you've got to respect that, absolutely, a lot of people don't want a hug. I mean, I, I thought quite hopefully we'd seen the back of shaking hands, a sort of faux, I find it a faux masculine assertion act. Um, Sally Griffin, you're going to hug your best girlfriend. This is nice news, isn't it, Sally? I think it was you who asked. Is there any nice news? And the nice news is we can all hug from June. It's official. It's not official, but it, it could well be official. Um, Della Nixon, my daughter, Hazel Malbon, my grandchildren. Sarah Perlmutter, waiting to hug my nephew, six months old, not allowed till second jab. Um, Anita O'Reilly, my dad, he was finally discharged from hospital. Uh, Faith Goodman, yes, Normal People is up for BAFTAs, one of which is photography and lighting for Susie Lavelle. So the lighting was beautiful on it, wasn't it? Isn't it weird, though, that did Normal People happen in the last year? Did it happen in lockdown? When I saw the list of BAFTA contenders, I it had a huge sense of, oh, my God, this is a year earlier, isn't it? My God. Um, Julie Neary, my dad. I want a dad squeeze. Oh. I know, and I'm looking forward to seeing Fleurabel and Isabel very, very soon. It's going to be nice to all be reconnected again. Namisha Bal, morning, Mark and Andrew. It's my birthday today, and I would love to hug my 93-year-old grandma today. Bless. Sending you love. Sam JP, morning, Mark. I sent you an IG message. Uh, we don't get... Um, we just can't access our DMs. It's, a, it's, an, it's an unnavigable innavigable, unnavigatable section of the uh, of Instagram. Um, if it's a really urgent message, your best bet is to email it to Michelle, Sam. Um, oh, so lots of people they're saying, saying all the people they're gonna, they're gonna hug it, Fleurabelle and Isabella, no, I like to call them that. No, I like to call them Fleurabelle and Isabella. 
Um, Anne Murray, I'd like to give you and Nadia a hug for getting me through last year. Oh, well, we'd like to give you a hug for getting us through this year too. Um, Kerry J. Williams, I'd love to hug my friend and my sister. Um, Claire Smiley, you can't get, we can only get, we only see targeted DMs of people we follow. Um, and obviously we don't, don't follow everyone. We follow some people. Um, but yeah. Great home time last night. So funny with Lisa and Nadia's jabs, Della Nixon. It was fun. It was fun, wasn't it? I, I kind of ran it long because I, I felt it's an experience that most people have gone through. And I was sat there just chuckling away. I mean, some of the decisions, but, you know, sometimes I, I cut a lot of stuff out of these things because there's a lot of boring shit that happens or there's stuff that could be taken the wrong way and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I thought I thought rather nice to see two good old chums, female chums, going through the process, and, and they're just hysterical, aren't they? I mean, they were just very funny on their, on their phones. It was a lovely, Carl was a very, uh, Carl was a very good sport, uh, appearing. Uh, getting his jab, that was very sweet. Gabrielle, hello. Uh, Rosemary Mojito girl, hello. Uh, Julie Hilton, I'd give you and Nadia a huge virtual hug for getting us through this horrible time. Thank you so much, and Nanny Dai. Oh, well, I will extend that to Nanny Dai. Um, Francesca Bastos. Hi, yesterday at 4pm I had the second harassment situation on public transport in less than 48 hours. It's sickening. Uh, Francesca Bastos, I can't remember. Am I right in thinking, are you in the UK or are you in Austria? I can't remember. Now look, we talked about this on one of our Confessions of a Modern Parent. You know, it, it's going to be a tricky time for all sorts of things as people come out of lockdown. So yeah, it's, it's keep, your, keep your wits about you. Uh, Sue John's buffering. It's not buffering this end, my darling. I think it must be your your connection, your end. It's all running very smoothly down here. Dawn Claricoats, good morning. Thought I had missed you. No, you haven't missed anything. I haven't even, haven't even hit the first news story, really, other than we're all... Francesca Bastos, that's right, I remember. Vienna. Um, I remember filming a pilot for something in just outside Vienna for... Have you ever... I don't know if you heard of them called... What's it called? The Happy House? It's, it's a couple from the UK that set up something called The Happy House. And... It was meant to kind of bring relationships together. We shot this kind of taster pilot type thing. It was batshit crazy. Brilliant contributors, really fun. Sadly, it didn't get picked up. It's one of the biggest pains of the job. I'd love to have a, a list. I'd love to see all the shows that we pitch and lots of companies pitch that don't get made. Because believe you and me, just because there are people deciding what should be made, when you look at half the shit that's on television, you realise that probably most of the best shit hasn't been made. Um, Vienna, Vienna. Anyway, we shot some GVs, obviously, uh, in Vienna, and it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, uh, absolutely beautiful. It was almost like looking at an ornate cake. Karen Uller, my first coffee morning live in two weeks. So glad I made this morning. Oh, we're glad you too. Miss one, Trisha, buffering? I'm not buffering. That's really weird. I'm feeding myself to myself, and I'm not buffering. It's not buffering. Oh, good God almighty, I don't know what that advert's for. It's an innovative bra. Sorry, let me get that off. Uh, can't wait to get the vaccine, Sam JP. Over 42s at the moment, so hopefully not long until it's over 30s. Chin chin, drink to that. Oh, I've got a horrible feeling this is my last coffee of the day. Kerry Gracie, I have to admit, I've hugged my best friend a couple of times, but we both had our first vaccine. Well, that's good. You know what? You know what I really hope as we come out of this? I hope that as we come out of it, and obviously we should, you know, it, it, it's key that we observed all of the health things. I just hope those people for whom sort of, dobbing on people who weren't doing anything particularly wrong. I hope that they just kind of rein it back in a bit and sort of reflect on the fact that, you know, you know, we're human beings with needs. You know, I'm not talking about people who set up raves and do all of that sort of stuff. I'm not talking about that. There's a really clear distinction between those people who've made their own educated, informed decisions, you know, whether they've had a vaccine first or they've had COVID first or whatever. I just hope that that whole judgy thing starts to starts to go away. Um, for whom the bell tolls? Reese Roberts, that's a little ominous. It's a little, little ominous. Um, Reese, I watched Two Distant Strangers uh, last night. Wow. Uh, hard hitting. I'm thinking of uh, me and Annie Dye might do a review of it later in the week or a chat about it. Uh, that and The Present, uh, which was the Palestinian film. Two, two contenders for the best short film Oscar. Uh, is it Two Distant Fra Strangers? Uh, winning. Um, who will you hug, Mark? It's a good question. I really want to hug my friend Miranda. I really want to hug my friend Rachel. Uh, I really want to hug Lisa. I really want to hug uh, Miranda's baby. I really want to hug Miranda's 
partner, Theo. Um, yeah, I mean, I get to hug, I get to hug Nadia all the time. So I really want to hug Izzy. Really want to hug Flirt, obviously. I mean, they they go without saying, but yeah. But until then, I'm just going to hug myself. Yeah, Della Nixon. No, I'm starting a intermediary course uh, that kicks in, I think, over the summer, uh, and then that is a, a sort of run in to the uh, MSC uh, addiction and counselling because of COVID. It's kind of played havoc with a number of. Face-to-face uh, -face courses, but anyway, yeah, no, I, I do start. It's a it's an intermediary class two counselling. Um, I don't know what it is, not an MBQ or something, but it's 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 accredited. It's an accredited thing. I think I think essentially in about six months' time, if I wanted to set up, though, I wouldn't. I could set up as a counsellor. That's frightening, isn't it? I mean, I genuinely think that I want to go deep into it before I start doing that um, and get qualified to the hilt, if you know what I mean. You've got lots to hug. I know, thanks, Claire Smiley. Have you watched I May Destroy You? We have watched. I like the first episode. We 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 put it on pause. We, we have to go back to it. Uh, we were watching it with um, probably people who were too young in the family for certain elements of it. I'm a huge fan of Papa Isiedo, who I think has been nominated for a BAFTA uh, in it. And in fact, we shot, again, we shot a the first part of a documentary short that we could probably resurrect, actually, because of theatres coming back up, we were shooting something which was called The Half, and it was about various actors and what they do in the half hour before they go on stage, and it was going to be a real-time cross-cutting between them. And we managed to rather fortunately shoot with Papa Esiedu, Esiedu, I can, can't pronounce it correctly, uh, from I May Destroy You, um, and uh, he was playing Hamlet at the RSC. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those films for people who love the craft of acting. But uh, I, I, I'm thinking of us resurrecting that and uh, filming. We wanted three or four different actors, you know, behind the scenes before we uh, took it to edit. Anyway, um, let's have a look at the news, shall we? So the good news, lots of good news today. Lots and lots of good news. That's good, isn't it? Um, one dose of the vaccine halves transmission shows a new study. A single dose of a coronavirus vaccine can reduce household transmission by half. Come on, guys. Hit the thumbs up if you just love that. Just Let's just... Think about that. I mean, you know, we have to be mindful that, as we've said many, many times, we've talked a lot about India and we've talked a lot about the fact that, you know, it feels, unfortunately, that l most places have to go through an absolute horrific peak. Um, but once through those peaks, and let's just, every let's hope the international effort will help India's peak really sort of, you know, not be as peak, as big a peak as it, as it looks like. Um, it looks like that all the all the data is pointing towards, as Health Secretary Matt Hancock says, terrific news. Uh, if everybody gets their vaccines, um, it, you know, it reduces transmission. And this is great because community transmission is the biggest thing. It's the biggest thing we need to worry about. And then once you've got it, it reduces the, you know, your ability to for severe disease by 60 to 65 percent straight away. So it looks like, you know, those scientists have done a remarkably good job. Uh, hopefully we've got through the bumpy patch of clots and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, th th that is incredibly good news. Now, I say this next story guardedly or I deliver it as a guarded good news because I think for a lot of people, for me, for example, the whole thing about travelling abroad, I, can, I completely understand the desire to escape. Um, and I also recognise that, you know, unfortunately, because lots of companies in the, in the UK are trying to make up for lost earnings, staycationing isn't necessarily a cheap option. You know, getting to a beach in Spain might be a cheaper option. But I do, the reason I'm guarded about this, it's great because it's a return to the normal. It's great because, you know, the government are going to adapt. The NHS app is going to allow for people and the, and the Tourist Minister for Spain has said, we want to invite all Brits back in June. And apparently in 2019, something like 17 to 19 million Brits travelled to Spain. So, of course, all of that is wonderful. But I just want to ask you guys, would any of you, if you could, knowing that there was the NHS app and you could do negative, you know, you could test negative, do a, a airflow test or whatever it's called, would you travel to Spain if you could, given the fact that it's all over the press today? that uh, people are moving to, uh, moving to Spain or wanted to travel to Spain very quickly. Would anyone? Happy birthday, Emma. Sorry, I'm missing missing an, uh, a birthday there. Happy birthday, Kerry. Lots of birthdays. Um, 
Would anyone, no, 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 no way, Faith, no, Reese, no, Mel W, no, Katie Merricks, nope. Um, oh, vast majority of no's, who's a yes there? Sorry, yes, that was, Karen Ula, you would. No, 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 too early. And that's not, that's interesting, because I mean, that's where I'm at in a sense. I'd be guarded, same here. Um, and this is the idea that you're gonna, the, the talk is that we might be able to travel by June without the need for quarantine on the way back. Um, but there are some, let, let me just put some, I think there are gonna be some caveats in this. Um, yeah, there's the whole thing of imagining things changing and you're getting stuck out there. Um, here's the caveat. Once you get out there, the business is out there, understandably, are gonna probably be doing exactly the same thing that the staycation businesses in the UK are doing, which is, hiking up their prices in order to make up for lost, lost earnings. Um, so it's going to be quite expensive. The other element to it, obviously, is going to be that travelling out there, I think, is going to be... I think the airports are going to be, even with the most minimalist... I mean, airports were bad as it was, let's face it. I mean, so I read somewhere someone saying, I felt the death knell of air travel was coming way before COVID. You know, things were taking longer, things were... Add into that the potential for six to seven to eight hour waits and it, nightmare at airports, Sally Griffin, absolutely. So there's that. Um, oh, look, Robert T, I'm furloughed from BA still. They have recalled most of the crew back for June. They seem to think everyone will go mad as soon as Spain is relit. Absolutely. And I think Spain is going to be greenlit. But I think, and also there's going to be such a rush, which will drive the price up, and it's going to be so busy. And so, and so in the end, you sort of wonder, oh, is the cleverer counterintuitive thing to do to wait for everyone who wants to go to Spain to go to Spain and then go on holiday in, in the UK. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, Dawn Clarico, it's the prices of things in, in Cornwall are astronomical, absolutely astronomical. I mean, places everywhere are, everyone is, everyone is trying to sort of make up for lost time or make up for lost earnings and what have you. And that, but that's going to be the case abroad too. I also think that social distancing rules that might be there on beaches and in bars and, and what have you abroad may well clip that, you know, I think the idea of returning back to that idyllic, not that it's necessarily idyllic, but Benidorm-like, you know, quintessential beach pool type thing I just don't necessarily think it's going to be like that. And I think we could all be going with rose-tinted glasses. Now, I say that as thinking, you know, the other day I was saying to the guys, you know what, I just want to go to the airport, point at a place and just go there. There's something in recovery, there's something in, in sobriety uh, called the geographicals. And it's really interesting because I think as a culture, I've said many times, I think as a culture, we're all addicted, we're culturally addicted to so many things. Drink, food, da 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 Spending, buying, all that kind of stuff. But I also think we, we culturally do, do the geographicals, our holidays are the geographicals. It's a way of going, right, let's escape me, let's escape my life, let's put it on pause. But of course, what do we always find when we get there? We're there. It's so distressing. So all I'm saying is be careful, guys, if you're suddenly going to go on the mad Spain rush. It could be a bit of a fool's goal. Now, that's not to say you might not get at the other end a great moment on a beach where there's no one else around you with your foot on some sand and you can poke it in the sea. But is it worth all the hassle? That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Um, so there you go. Uh, so, yes, yeah, Spanish holidays. Um, I saw something somewhere earlier. I had, for some reason, I had a bit of a, obviously, a bit of a sort of moment there. Driverless cars, I thought, for some reason. Oh, driverless cars. The reason, so that's all, that's all, you know, for some people, that is good news. It's good news that we can go to Spain. And it's definitely good news that the world is coming back to normal. And for all those businesses and for all the tourists, like the airlines, the tourist companies, of course, there's so many different exit points and entry points into such a, such a piece of news, yeah? So anyway, I think that's good news for some. But it's, a, I'm cautious. Next year, great. This year, a bit, mm. Um, but driverless cars, what do you think of driverless cars? Is it a yes or is it a no? Given the fact that smart motorways, I keep seeing stories on the fringes saying smart motorways are dangerous. Um, they're talking about introducing driverless cars this year. And guess what you can do when you're, doing, when you're driving a driverless car? Well, you're not driving it, obviously. You can go online, you can text. I wonder if you can drink. There you go. England's vaccine passport for holidays abroad will use the NHS app. So that NHS app you've got on your phone will become the passport. Um, D 
Do you need a driving license? Good question. Do you just need an on off button? I feel too old to understand this. Who said that? And I'm only 37, Laura Lou. <laughs> so what do you do? You just get in and it does it. And how does it, how do you make sure it doesn't crash? What if it fizzes out, Brenda McGee? What's the point? Can you do your driving test in one? In one, great news. I mean, is it like a sort of driverless cab? Yeah, it's a curious one, isn't it? Driverless cars is a disaster waiting to happen, Russ out. Absolutely, I agree. On that point, did anyone, has anyone heard of this awful story? This is an awful story. Uh, about a guy who's now being dubbed the most hated man in Australia. I was quite shocked when I read this story. A Porsche driver who was over the limit, I believe, on MDMA. Well, over the limit. You shouldn't have it. He had illegal drugs in him. So he had cannabis and MDMA in his system in Australia. Uh, was pulled over by the police. Whilst he went for a wee on the verge... The police got struck, three, three or four of them got struck and killed by a truck that veered out of control. And then he filmed them, calling them all sorts of horrible words, saying, there you go, that's sort of, uh, that's karma type thing, that's justice. I couldn't believe it. I mean, okay, so he didn't hit them, but I mean, you've, rather than calling for help, Rather than calling for help, I mean, I, what, I, I, I was flabbergasted. I was absolutely flabbergasted. To feel, in fact, it's interesting actually, what, what was in this story? You know, to, to look at presumably dead people and film it and think that in any state that that's normal, that feeds into a little bit. We're doing a Confessions of a Modern Parent this week. Um, and we're recording, in fact, we're recording it later today. About the violent satin sea. Uh, and, uh, you know, whether it be in the news, whether it be online, whether it be in films, in video games, the violence they've got used to seeing, or whether it's viral stuff that they shouldn't see. And, and the way in which it slightly is, an, I believe, it's anaesthetising, I think, younger and younger people to what they should have genuinely shocking responses to. Um, so I'll leave a... I'm going to leave something on my Instagram. It's Mark underscore Adderley, I think, <laughs> at Mark underscore Adderley on my Instagram, IG stories. If you've got your th any thoughts on that, do, do head over there. Because, you know, I remember as a kid, I used to just watch, um, you, you know, it was like video nasties was the biggest threat, but there was no source of being able, there was no place to even access video footage. Video was just coming in. Absolutely, Sally Jenkins, it leads to no empathy. That sort of comment. If you could, if you, when, as soon as I've done this live, I'm going to post something on my Insta stories with a spaced comment. Please do feed in on it, what your thoughts on it are, whether it anaesthetizes youngsters, numbs them off, removes empathy, almost traumatizes them so that they have a sort of PTSD. Should it be controlled? Excuse me, how can it be controlled? We're going to talk about a very shocking moment. Uh, I believe Maddie's going to talk about a very shocking moment where she had something shown to her, thrust in front of her face when she was at school at about the age of 10 or 11, that she's always struggled to ever forget. So video games, fake them, there you go. So, so yeah, head over to my Insta stories or, or have a look at in the next sort of hour or so and I'll pop something up. I've got to jump straight on a quite an urgent final edit tweak for my film. And then I'm out a couple of days next week. Nadia's going to be running the ship and there might be no coffee moaning for one day next week, just to say. But anyway, this guy, so it just reminded me that a lack of compassion and a lack of ability to read, to read, um, you know, traumatic situations. Quite something, quite something, quite shocking. Um, Britney Spears, where, where are you all on Britney Spears? What do you think of Britney Spears? Where are you at with Britney Spears? Reese Roberts, I also think that we are living in such violent times that we're becoming normalised for all these events. Media platforms like Facebook show traumatised. In fact, why not leave, leave comments? When this is uploaded, you'll be able to leave comments underneath. Leave comments under here now about your thoughts about the levels of violence uh, witnessed by our teenagers. And, you know, how can we parents help? Tim, where fact is fiction and TV reality. I think all those boundaries are getting blurred. Any of your thoughts would be really useful and we'll share them uh, if you, well, you can't be anonymous on here, but we'll share them on the, we'll, we'll read them out on the, uh, 
on the podcast. We really like our podcast being driven as much by ideas that we have, ideas that Maddie, Carlitos, other parents have, but also by the news, but also by you guys too. So, yeah. Hi, Miss One Trisha. How are you? Have you been able to book your vaccine now? I've, I've had my first jab, Miss One Trisha. Unfortunately, I'm old enough. Don't remind me. Raspberry Mojito Girl. So, um, Brittany, Lee's here. Lee, 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 Lee. Uh, me, Lee and Nadia were ruminating over who the murderer is in Mayor of Easttown. Do go and check out, well, don't check out a review because it's a spoiler. Go and check out Mayor of Easttown. It, it, it's really good. I keep waiting for it not to be good and it just isn't. It's great. It's great. It's really good. Hi, Lee. Hope you're well, Squire. Um, Brittany, come on, what do we all think about Brittany? Where are we, where are we at on Brittany uh, and her conservatorship? The pop star has rarely spoken out about her conservatorship. Um, but at a, at a hearing about her long-standing conservatorship, uh, she is going to be allowed to... Um, she's going to be allowed to talk about her conservatorship... Uh, on June the 23rd, so I was just looking for the date. Uh, she's made it known that she's strongly opposed to having a father um, look after her conservatorship. So it's going to be interesting. I think June 23rd is going to be quite a big day for Britney fans. Um, because I think it's going to be the first time we actually hear her speak for herself and have some control over her destiny. What do you think? Conservatorship is where, essentially due to, invariably due to, a belief, a legally sanctioned belief that the person uh, cannot look after their own affairs and could cause either personal, physical, economic damage to themselves. Um, someone is kind of handed over, someone, someone is sort of essentially handed the keys to your life. Um, and so that's been the, that's been the issue there. Um, her father is a shocking control freak. freak. Uh, Miss one Trisha, I'm intrigued. Sorry, who was that? That was Brenda McGee. Um, I am intrigued to hear what she will say when she speaks for herself in court and will we will get an idea of how much the facts are true. Uh, Marcia Toms, I think Brittany has been very messed up by her father and others and not had the help she needed. Um, feel bad for her, April Hill. I feel sorry for her, Dawn Clary Coates. Yet they allow her to work and earn her money, but keep it from her, Emma Lake. Absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Where, certain, where freedom is allowed. Sad it's playing out in the media, Sally Griffin, for sure. Uh, Catherine Boomer, her father should back off. She's a grown woman who has redeemed herself. Absolutely. At what point? I mean, otherwise, it's a bit like one flow of the cuckoo's nest, isn't it? The more you demonstrate your uh, sanity in someone else's eyes, somehow that confirms more your need to be controlled. It always horrified me, the whole one flow of the cuckoo's nest thing. Um, I, 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 this was a curious story here. Does Italian, bear with me, I'm going off, on, I'm going off on a complete tangent here. Italian hermit on island alone is leaving after 32 years. Makes you wonder what on earth. He became known as Italy's Robinson Crusoe after spending more than 30 years as the only resident of an idyllic island off the coast of Sardinia. Could you be on, who could be on their own for 30, is anyone here? Could anyone here be a hermit? Could anyone here, I, I, I've definitely toyed with, um, going into retreat as a Buddhist. I've talked about it many times in various places, certainly to family and friends. Maybe I haven't talked to them on air, I don't know. Um, no, no, Emma Lake, yes. I could easily, Mel W. I am a hermit, Claire Smiley. I don't, you see, I don't think there's anything wrong with hermitage, if you want to. I mean, I think people always want to look at it as some kind of dysfunctionality. And I just think, for, you know, for some people, it's not just, not even about social anxiety. It's just a desire not to... Sometimes, but not for not long. Yeah. yeah. Faith Goodman, exactly, I totally agree. What, what makes him want to leave now? What, well, let's have a read. Let's read on, shall we? Um, he's bidding farewell to his tiny hut on the Isle of Budeli, ah, after local authorities, repeat, local authorities repeatedly threatened him with eviction. He's 81. He's been living on the island since 1989, and he announced his departure on his Facebook page. So he's plugged into social media... Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes my desire to want to walk around the world, which I've also talked about a lot, which would take me about four to five years, is also a desire to be on my own. And yet, at the same time, I like meeting people. I love meeting people. I love meeting you. 
it's nice. I'm fascinated by people. I don't want people to know, I don't know, I'm, I'm, fa I'm fascinated by people and other people and I want to connect with them. But then a bit like a sort of crustacean, I just want to sort of hide back in my shell. Bless him though, bless him. Brenda McGee, you've heard about him. Oh, he's being, he's being pushed up. Why after 32 years? I guess they want to probably develop it and put a hotel on it, don't you? I thought that was kind of a sweet story. Um, this isn't a sweet story. Uh, a chap called Mohammed Aisha has been prevented from leaving a vessel without power and co was covered in insects and rodents like a coffin. A Syrian sailor was stuck on a ship alone for years, but he's just been granted freedom. Oh my God, how are you all with contained spaces? God, how horrific is that? Like a living coffin. Oh. Mr. Asia was the sole occupant on board a vessel that had no power and was infested with insects and rodents. Oh. My God, he's been stuck on a boat for years. Sorry, that's, oh God, that's two different types of hermitage there. Oof. Ha! Someone said Hayley Edwards. Yeah, Stuart, part-time hermit. Who, is, Stuart, is that Stuart G? Someone's saying they want to be a part-time hermit. I like that. It's kind of like an oxymoron, but it kind of works. Yeah, that's horrendous, isn't it? Being stuck on a ship for two years. That should be turned into a film. They should, he should, he should, I don't know, write a tweet vlog, copyright it, and then sell it. Yeah, Stuart G, that, a part-time hermit. That's kind of weird, isn't it? A hermit crab. I talked about going under my crustaceous shell and we're talking about hermit crabs. Crabs are a little bit hermitu, hermitu, hermitu. Um, Ellie Groves, hi Mark, I'd love you to make a guest appearance and talk at one of my online lectures at Bristol University. I'm doing a creative and pro professional writing. Oh, I don't know what I could contribute to it. Um, Reese Roberts, when I went to Vietnam, I opted to climb through the Ho Chi Minh tunnels, which was used in the war, which get tighter and tighter. <gasps> so I'm okay with small spaces. That sounds so cool. That must have been fascinating. We really want to go to Vietnam. Vietnam got a huge handle on the coronavirus, didn't it? It just shut down its borders. And, but no one really talks about Vietnam, but they got a really art degree. Thanks, Ellie Grove. They, 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 they did very well. Mark, how will you feel about having personal counselling before you... I have... Oh, absolutely. I'm very, very used to personal counselling. I've had so many personal counsellors over the years, it's ludicrous. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, in the personal counselling side of things, being able to know how to step beyond my own experiences. Do you know what I mean? And, and find strategies for, for... I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm targeting the world of rehab, uh, of uh, addiction um, and alcoholism. Um, so, you know, there's, and uh, when I was talking to the course director, uh, he was saying, you know, lots of people come to the course and become counsellors who've either got long-term sobriety or have uh, relatives that struggle. So, but yeah, no, I, I, I really look forward to that. It's really me. I find counselling, I don't think counselling is ever a waste. It's, it's, you know, I mean, obviously there are some bad counsellors out there. That's the difficulty is making sure you find the right person. And I think if you have counsellors, it's a really important point. I think I, I, I suggested to someone who was on here who was struggling with a counsellor, it's part of a counsellor's training and job to be receptive to um, criticism or concern from your patient, if you like. Um, so, uh, you know, if you have concerns, you're absolutely right. Don't ever feel dot cap in hand, sort of like you can't, like they have the be all and end all on you. If that's the case, then you, it's probably not the right counselling for you. Um, Oh, thank you, Brenda. It's very kind of you. Well, look, guys, I, let, let me have one last trawl through the news, see if there's any other weird things. We've had hermit, hermits on islands in Italy. We've had coffin ships. Uh, we've had Brittany. We've got COVID passports heading out to. We've had driverless cars. We've had the most hated man in Australia, which was just horrific, wasn't it? Um, I think that's enough to be getting on with, isn't it, for today? Um, oh, and former Manchester United footballer Ryan Giggs pleads not guilty in first court appearance after being charged with assault. There you go. That's literally just broken now in case you are following that story. Um, but guys, how did Nadia get on with the dentist? Maudy May, I will leave that to Nadia to share with you. It, all I will say is it didn't go quite according to plan. Now, I am appearing on a podcast tonight. It's not live, obviously, but it's I'm recording it between, I forgot, I'm recording it between seven and eight. We have got the 
uh, on your mark, get set, cook. Um, I finish my scheduled edit today at six. I think it's going to be a bit tight to squeeze it in at six and seven, so it might be happening at eight. Community tab. Um, Chichi's is dreaming. Chichi's is dreaming of fields, chasing squirrels up trees. Can you hear her? Oh, I love it when she does that. Anyway, guys, lots of love. Have a lovely day. Check out the vlog if, you, if you've got time. Um, and it's, it's fun. It's lovely. It's Lisa and Nadia being funny and silly. Um, and what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, and a green for good health is coming, coming soon. I'm just trying to find the time to edit the damn thing.